I wanted to add a garage and a budget both cost and time-wise, which meant avoiding the city permitting process and building small. I ended up going with a 12 foot wide by 17 foot long shed with common rafters for added storage space up high to hang things. At the time of building, all materials including the doors, paint, shingles was about 4,500 and about 2,000 to pay someone to install a four inch concrete pad. So close to $7,000 total. Of course, during the pandemic, we've seen material costs go up and down wildly, so that can change any time. All right, we got the uh, lumber delivered. Done lumber, small lumber yard here in the Seattle area. Got it all delivered. They dropped it right next to our concrete pad, and I'm about ready to start framing it out. The other pieces, uh, some of the long trim. I started off by framing the two long walls without the doors. I used pre-cut 92 and 58 studs, which make eight feet when you add the bottom plate and the two top plates. On these walls, I've got the two top plates, and right here is where the other top plate from the side walls is gonna cross over and overlap. And these are all 16 on center. So you just take your tape measure and mark out where the red marks are on the tape measure and that's pretty easy. You put two nails in each stud and you try to make sure that the crown, so if there's any kind of bend or arc, they call it the crown, you want it to go this way. These just All of these studs were actually pretty straight as you can see, but you can see like that third one down has a little bit of crown in it. And so the crown, the convex side is outward. Night one, got the two sidewalls built here. We're ready to go up tomorrow. So tomorrow we'll get this stood up and then start measuring out the other walls. The other walls are going to be a little bit harder because we have to frame the doors on those ones. Okay, so we got our uh, garage door framed out. So this is going to be an 8 foot wide by 7 foot tall garage door. So for the header here we took two 2 by 10s. These were two uh, 10 foot long 2 by 10s and sandwiched a piece of half inch plywood. It's just some old plywood um, in between them. And nailed those together. And then on the sides, you got the one long stud called the king stud and the two shorter studs that support the header. And those are called the jack studs. And you just want to measure out to make sure that the width is the width for your garage door. So in this case, I did it just a hair, maybe a quarter inch smaller than the opening because the actual door is going to go back here behind all this on some two by sixes that we'll mount later. And then up here, we're just mounting these blocks to support in between the header and the first top plate, uh, just so that's not an empty space. I'll probably just uh, wood glue these in and clamp it uh, roughly a little more than every 16 inches just to support that. And we got this wall. There's Tom, my brother. We got this wall just standing up and supported on studs. It's not squared yet, but just out of the way. And all the J bolts fit pretty nicely. Holding the uh, sill plate or the bottom plate onto the foundation. Okay, so we got the man door on the last wall here, the fourth wall. So I'll have to stand that one up. Uh, so the man door, a little different than the garage door. We left about a quarter inch space on each side of the door uh, so that the pre preformed jam is going to fit inside of there. You want to leave a little space so you can do shims and things like that. And the header on this one is a two by six sandwich with half inch plywood in the middle. And we got one top plate already on the corner here, tying in, we got the J bolts, all the J bolts marked, they're on, still have to put a few more concrete screws in there near the door so the wall doesn't move around when the door opens and closes. So the next step is to stand up this wall and then uh, get all the top plates on and square it up.
Okay, so we took, I took the house roof and tried to find the angle or the degree of the slope and got it to about 21 degrees. Used an inclinometer and then a, just used a string hanging down and measured the rise over the run and figured out the angle there was 21 degrees. And then this is the sketch of what we're going to do in the shed. So we're going to have the ridge block which is two by eights in the middle, and then two by sixes on the sides, 12 feet for the shed, six feet on each side. And we figured out that this center, or sorry, the ridge blocks needs to be about 2.4 feet up. So cut the 2.4 feet in the center, and then drew out what one of these is going to look like on the ground, the angle that I want for that. So we'll make one of these as a template first and then cut all of the rest of them uh, once we get that ridge block up. So the next step now is to get the ridge block up onto the roof. To cut the, uh, the angle where the rafter is going to meet that center beam, I found out that my degrees with the line that I drew kind of by accident was really, really close to 22.5 on the saw. So it must be a kind of a standard um, measurement for this. So it's good, it kind of, the saw kind of clicks into 22.5 and I'm just gonna use 22.5 and we'll see how that works. Okay, so I built these cradles. They're pretty square. I used some shims to square them. And just screwed in the board here and the two boards on the sides. And that's gonna cradle the center beam. So I got one there and one in the center over there. Tried a couple different ways of attaching the rafters. Here we got just toe nailing some nails in with a nail gun. It goes all right once you kind of figure it out. But it does take a little bit of time to get the hang of it. We also got some brackets, which go in, but they take a little more time because you gotta pound them in without the nail gun. So here we got a bracket and these nail gun to toenail one in. Here we're just making these little cuts. So I just measured out one inch in the corner and then straight edge. And then we're just gonna cut that with a skill saw. And that creates notch so that the fascia fits on. Here we are adding the blocks that will support the eaves hanging over the gable end. Without these blocks, the gable ends would be pretty flimsy before they get the sheer strength from putting the plywood on. Rafters are done, so now we're going to move on to uh, securing the sill plate and then making sure everything's plumb and straight before we start putting uh, the siding plywood on. Here we put tar paper on as a vapor barrier. A better way, but also more expensive, would be to put a layer of OSB sheathing on now, then the vapor barrier, then the T111 siding plywood. But this way it cuts some of that cost without really losing shear strength. The T111 siding goes on over the vapor barrier. We use two inch siding nails in the nail gun. Okay, so we got the uh, plywood, or sorry, the OSB sheathing up on top of the roof now. And we also got the fascia boards on. So the OSB is a little tricky. Uh, just making sure it ends on studs. You get one eighth inch spacing and making sure that they alternate at least two studs or rafters in between. It's a little bit hard to see. You can kind of see one there right in the middle. Um, so that's the key to the OSB board. Once you get that on, it kind of locks everything into place with the plywood and it is really sturdy now. Really solid building. Here you can see the fascia. So the fascia board 
it was just attached to the end of the rafters and you put that on and it goes down that looks pretty good and the other thing I did this morning is cut blocks of 2x6 to fill in between where all the rafters end and I'll probably do a piece of trim right there underneath it just to make that look a little bit better after it's painted um, so I'm going to paint that white underneath and paint this blue or blue gray eventually there's the eve all right so just a quick update just uh framed out the gable ends on 16 inch centers this is the one on the back and i just cut a gap there for this uh, gable vent that's going to go in all right there it is installed gable vent it's probably a little bit big but figured it Provide some nice ventilation in the summer. And it's just gonna be on the back of the shed. And here are the studs uh, framed out on 16 inch centers on the other gable end. Got the felt paper installed over the vent. And then next, I chalk lined out where the uh, bottom of the first siding board is gonna go. And I kinda just measured them all out there to make sure that. Uh, I like the way they were going to line up along the vent. There's going to be four uh, eight inch reveal siding boards here. And the cedar is super expensive. So I ended up going with a uh, hardy plank. It's kind of a cement board. I've never used it before. So the first thing I did was made a couple templates like this one at the 22 and a half degree pitch of the roof and use that. This first one's a little funky because it starts low on the uh, on the building. I'm planning to cover that up with trim eventually. Um, and then I just made a line there to get my 22 and a half degrees. And then I just clamped a straight edge on here and I'm going to try using this carbide tip tool and or an exacto blade to make this cut. So we'll see how it goes. Too bad, they're not perfect. So this top edge is gonna get covered with trim, but I'll have to at least get that off. Uh, I, you know, you can watch videos online, people use saws and other things to cut it. The nice thing is this doesn't really make much of a mess, whereas I guess the saws would spray this small particulates everywhere, get it in your lungs, and so I think this is gonna be the way to go. The first couple pieces of siding up, it's going pretty smoothly. Definitely gonna have to, uh, trim the edges. Make those look good. Okay, so it's been a little bit since my last update here. Uh, the rain is coming and I'm trying to get the roof on pretty quickly. So this, the fascia board, which is this outside trim board, and these are the soffit panels. That's what I'm going to call them. And you can see I kind of had to fit them in there. That took a little bit of time to measure each board and pound those in there. You can see they're just held in on the rafter beams that stick out. And I ended up ending them here and that was just to kind of match the look of the house because the sides of the house look like that. Um, so I cut a, a soffit board for each panel, measured each one, did fascia board, put a little cap on that center block beam and did that on both sides. And then you can also see over here, I ended up caulking in between these bird blocks just to keep the insects out all the way down. And I'll also end up caulking along where the siding meets the soffit there. I got some uh, backer rod, some foam rod to fill in the larger gaps. Also caulked the door in, so I just started doing some general caulking. You don't want to caulk this seam here on siding. That needs to breathe those bottom seams. Um, and then next up, 
right here. You can see I started installing the uh, drip uh, edging, drip edge. So I put it along the edges, the lateral edges of the roof line on both sides. And you can see I cut and folded the edge over on top there. And the next step is going to be the felt tar paper on top of that. So I'm going to cut out sheets of tar paper, get them laid up there nicely, and then put them in with uh, plastic headed nails. Okay, so we got the roofing felt on, drip edge installed at the gable ends, and then we taped off the uh, gable vent, the door, and we taped off where the garage door is going to go. And now we're ready to paint. I borrowed my brother's uh, airless paint machine. And we're just going to use this primer to start out with. Hopefully that five gallon bucket's enough. Got some more just in case. And then we're going to paint the eaves white on top of that. Alright, let's get started. That's two coats of primer. That's about six gallons of primer. Alright, so we taped up the eaves. Tip of the eaves with plastic and tape. Trying to minimize the touch up work afterwards. And this is the only other piece of trim that I taped up. So now we're gonna paint it blue to match the color of the house. Just a little update here. We've got the first side of the roof on. Just wanted to show how we're starting the roof on the other side. Okay, so there's lots of videos out there that go into detail on this, but just really quick. First course is a full shingle, and it's off-centered from the starter strip so that those lines don't match up. And then these shingles call for uh, five and five eighths inch. There's the line, there's the next seam. And then you get seven courses started, and they're all exposing five and five eighths inch on each next course and then they're just lining up to the edge here of the architectural shingle and that's it and then you just keep putting courses across cut them off and start seven more courses as you work up towards the ridge I'm going to make a separate detailed video on the garage door installation with specifics related to the Clopay Home Depot model as it's one of the most cost efficient garage doors. One more nice finishing touch is to paint a coat or two of clear coat sealer on the concrete to give it a more finished look. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope it helps you in planning your shed or garage.